Hey. Um, I've been gone for a while. And I'm so weak. I just, I recently had a video that kind of went, it popped off a little bit. It was about the black TikTok strike. I am so grateful. I've had so many new subscribers come to our little family. What's up? Welcome to the club. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I make black history content. I make black culture content as well as positivity content on my Instagram. You know, a little plug right there. Go follow if you're not already. I'm so excited to have you guys on this journey with me. Let's get into the video. Have you ever sat in your history class and thought, damn, this is the most boring class I have ever been in. Like, how do people like history? Well, welcome to the right place because these three stories you don't have to take notes on. There are no exams, no quizzes, none of that. Just pure badassery in one video. First lady we have, we all know her. Her name is Harriet Tubman. Led slaves through the Underground Railroad. I'm pretty sure they were doing a Soul Train line while they were doing it. Well, did you know that she also played a part in winning the Civil War? That's right. <laughs> So let's rewind a bit. Harriet Tubman is minding her black owned business in the washroom that she owns when she receives a message. And the message is basically asking her to be a spy for the union. Dope, let's do it. Now, if you don't know anything about this time, Civil War, Union, North, South, Confederacy. They were for slavery or states rights to own slaves. And then the North, was using slavery as a way to win, if that makes sense. So basically clashing. So she went down to South Carolina and joined forces with Colonel James Montgomery, who was an abolitionist, and his all black regiment baby to form a raid on Southern plantations. That means they were gonna free enslaved people, baby. Ah! Now hold on. Hold, hold on. on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Harriet was leading a military raid, which had never happened before. Y'all know what time it is. Welcome back to Black First, everyone. I'm your host, the show where we guess what the black person, person did it first. first. That's right. Let's look at the board. If Harriet Tubman was in charge of Union soldiers and that had never been done before, what does that make her? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that makes Harriet Tubman the first woman to have led a military operation that was armed. Go, Harriet! So Harriet's men started informing enslaved people. Sally, turn that off. Our house about to be taken. Hello, who is this? Y'all about to be free on Tuesday. Oh, word. I'll get the game together. Y'all. Y'all. Girl, what? We are gonna be free on Tuesday. Yes. yes. I know, right? I know! So night came, and Harriet, along with her regiment, was on the John Adams, waiting for the signal to be given. And when it was, slave people were running from everywhere, running to be freed. And Confederates were still running after them to try and catch them, but nah, nah. In the end, more than 700 enslaved people were enslaved no more. You know what I'm saying? Baby, 700 people. Go Harriet, because now, if you thought that was a long time ago, let's go even farther back to the 1500s and go across the world to the UK, love. There was this man named John Blanc. Blank, Blanc, I'ma call him Blanc. And he was a trumpeteer to Henry the Seventh and the Eighth. And this man worked. He played his instrument for the king every day of the month. And he got paid. This man got his bag. While he was working, there was a point where the senior trumpeteer above him passed away. So he was like, okay, I've been working here a long time. I deserve to, you know, fill in that role. And usually for trumpeteers, there was a set amount of wage. So there, you couldn't really, uh, raise it, increase it, decrease it, whatever. It was a set amount. But John knew his worth. He had been working for the king for a long time. He was good at his job. So he wrote a letter basically saying, yo, I deserve to be here. Look, dog. All I'm trying to say is I've been here a long time, you know, I stand out from the crowd. So basically you need to be giving me more money. I'm worth more. Simple as that. And man succeeded and doubled his wage. How many of you wish you could uh, double your wage at your job. We love a man who gets his bag, and we also love a woman who outsmarts her opponent. Let's meet Queen Nzinga. Now, if I'm not pronouncing this right, please correct me in the comments. We couldn't really find one pronounce pronunciation online, but for now, I'm gonna pronounce it Queen Nzinga. Now, during the 1600s, the Portuguese had established a trading system with the Kingdom of Congo, which is in Angola. Trading route of slaves. Love that for us. And this was also near Nzinga's home. And eventually the Portuguese had the audacity to intrude on Nzinga's land. 
and Bundu people. So obviously when tensions rose, the Portuguese was like, all right, let's hold a peace meeting so that we don't have to, you know, be in all this tension, even though they're the ones that intruded and they're trying to get slaves. Like, put two and two together. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't. So originally the Portuguese invited the king, but instead the king sent his sister, Zinga, to represent him. Now when Zinga got there and entered the room, she saw that there was one chair and she knew that that one chair was for the Portuguese representative. She also knew that this was a ploy to make it look like that she was inferior. Somebody trying to trip me up. I'm not that kind of person. So she was like, we're not inferior to you. You're on our land. And so she got one of her servants to get down on her hands and knees and become her seat. So she used one of her servants as a chair and established equality, even when the Portuguese were trying to trick her into inferiority. Bad so free. Yeah. Now this display of strategy followed even after her brother's death when she became queen. After the Portuguese started gaining more and more desire for slaves, she spent her entire life opposing them. She allied with the Dutch and defeated an army of the Portuguese. She personally led troops into battle in her 60s and avoided multiple attempts of assassination by the Portuguese. And even after her death, Angola continued to fight for their freedom, eventually gaining independence in the 1970s. Woman, get the work done. Now for me, these stories just matter so much because I grew up with learning black history. I just have a passion about learning about it, especially since it's not taught like at all in school. So I thought it was cool to incorporate some stories that weren't just during slavery. Now a lot of y'all on my Instagram have asked about that too, you know, what about before slavery? So it was really fun to research these and made me feel, you know, a little more proud to be a black person. If you found these interesting, subscribe. And it's nice to meet you. Fist bump. Is your hand up? Good. Fist bump. Please like this video. It really helps me out. It's right there. Just like it, only take a second. Comment your thoughts down below if you have any stories that are badass, black history or not. If there were any facts or if I pronounced something wrong, please let me know. I'm always open to learning more. Give me ideas for any videos you want me to do. And I will see you guys next time. And you better come back. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.